Guys, welcome to the show. Mike, isn't it a damn shame that Alf was on that Epstein list? Yeah. Dude, that's what I thought you were going to say about um, Tugboat Willie. <laughs> Dude, we could talk about Tugboat Willie a little bit now because we won't be in the ding zone for doing that. Oh, is that the thing? Is that it's like a public domain? Yeah, Mickey Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie. Has <laughs> <Tugboat> entered. <laughs> Dude, I love that you called it that. <laughs> Like whenever we talk about movies or yeah. pop culture, there's yeah. always a mix up. That's so funny. That's whatever that is, is my thing. My unintentional thing. Yeah. I love that. It's good. Kind uh, of not know, kind of knowing what stuff is. Right. Is my thing. But uh, yeah, Steamboat Willie has entered into the public domain. And uh-huh. what does that dang even mean? You're asking. Well, copyright laws and trademarks and all of those things are really complicated things but i guess you just can't own something forever yeah i think that's right so they trademarks make it so that after a hundred years someone else could like use it or it just goes back out into the world what's the benefit of that I don't really know, actually, of all pop culture useless bullshit that's in here. Yeah. That one eludes me. Let's find out. I bet this is the best week to find out. Get away from me. <laughs> what was the question? Um, what is the benefit of releasing a trademark into the world after 100 years? Why do trademarks ex- why, expire? Why do they, yes, that's great. Ask the chat GBT plus community, <laughs> why do trademarks expire? Why? Why don't you just tell me if people know? Then I can know. (laughs) (laughs) Kevin, you look like a skinny hacky sack. (laughs) And I love the colors on your shirt. Have you been in front of a camera yet? I think I just was. Bye, Zoya. You look beautiful. Uh, I do. I want to get to something that maybe I God, maybe, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Who is a woman, by the way? BB Bobby, that famous race car driver, BB Bobby. Hey, BB Bobby. <laughs> Still like top five sounds of all time for me in it's general. Not one. even on the show. It's a good one. Um. There's piss news, but I want to talk about uh, Steamboat Willie first. Really bad. And then we'll get... But there is piss news, There's so much to talk... There's so much to cover. There is a lot to cover today on the show. And this is topical. This is what we were talking about. We were talking about... Guys, welcome to the show. We were talking about utilizing moments from the show that could be fun to share with your friends on the internet. Yeah. And you don't have to be a mangled brain... Like we are, and like you guys are who love this show, to understand what's happening and to laugh at it. Our brains are so distorted from this almost eight years piss cast. And, uh, but we want to make clips that get people who have not had their brains destroyed by the show yet. <laughs> and I think this is one of those, like this piss story I have. But also the Steamboat Willie one, because that's very topical news. They're already making a movie. Dude, they, they, people are making things. People are selling shirts. Of Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie. Willie. It's like madness. It's Steamboat Willie madness. And Kevin was just saying mm-hmm. that the Corridor Digital guys, who are old school YouTuber boys that I'm sure you've met or know or whatever. Maybe. Or have met them at a party at some point. Uh, they just put Steamboat Willie on their YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so fucking funny and brilliant. Uh-huh. Uh, it does seem like one of those things that's going to be uh, super around for uh, two weeks. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. 
Doesn't it seem yeah. like some things are just plopped in front of you to be like, this is what we're doing this week? Yeah, it's just going to it, it might pop off for a minute. And there'll be a bunch of shirts and a bunch yeah. of ways that people could profit off of it. Yeah. Because that's poo. the basis of the Yeah, thing. we need the poo. And, pu- and Pinocchio. Yeah. Pinocchio also. What no, about the, the... They're both expiring? We need the poo went no, into the expired. public domain. Or, yeah, entered back into the public domain. And people Whoa. made, like, haunt a horror Winnie the Pooh movie. Oh, that's stuff. why that happened. Yeah. And same thing with NASA. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so it says here, uh, this says Steamboat Willie is now public domain, but what does this actually mean for Mickey Mouse? <laughs> I, I guess I just don't want to. So it, it says yeah, Steamboat Willie's copyright was originally supposed to expire in 1984, 56 <laughs> years after it was originally released, because that's how long copyright used to last. How much? 50? 56. But that's like very much during your lifespan. Right. right. Unless you invent something when you're like 45. Okay. It says, what is the public domain anyway? Well, we know that. It's all the creative works that no one owns the rights to. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay. One little just ding, ding, dong. God, I wish I just had like a real easy explanation. Why don't you do chat GBT? Isn't that what that is Can for? Can I do it into my laptop? How do you do it? Tell me how. You need to teach an old man how to, you have to turn whisper on the VCR. It into your laptop. <laughs> Dude, imagine when there's sex robots and you you're too old to like figure it out and you Henny. have to like call Henny. <laughs> <your> fucking... <laughs> Where's my balls, but also call Harry <laughs> and click the chat GBT and th- and then you well we can I guess use mine. Yeah, because I don't have a login for this shit. Well, okay. Although dude. there's my email there. For I know. Some I thought you Should were like we all about ChatGPT. Well, I don't think I've ever. It's oh. right there. Maybe I signed up for it, but I have not used it. Look at that. Oh, wonderful. That's what it's called, yeah. ChatGPT. PT. Okay, P-T. so. GPT. I think, right? GPT, yeah. <laughs> okay. GPT. Okay, so how do I ask it? ChatGPT. What uh, was I saying? Right there. It says what am I going to need? Tell me a fun fact. No message. <laughs> oh, I thought I could talk to it though. How do I talk oh, to it? Oh, you want to talk to no, it? No, you type. Type your. Oh, type it. Were we talking to it on the show not too long ago? And you're thinking of Siri. Questions? Oh, when Nick was here. Nick. Oh, you're right. Nick did have some sort that of. You if the app might have something. Let's call like Nick. It's so much funnier to talk to it. I don't want to type anything. Okay. Well, then I thought we were just trying to get the God answer to a question. That yeah, me too. I think I can find it faster this way. Who would uh, know that we could just call? You want to do it? You can do it. Well, let's see who gets there first. We can call my lawyer, but I think I have to pay for that. <laughs> let's call. But she would know. You want to say it? See? Go ahead. You found it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. My lawyer, who is oh, also a woman, does like the God. Does one not do that? I mean, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it. So the tap the little Mikey. Tap the Mikey. No one's this listening. Guy? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, three what different was the question we wanted to ask? Dude, that's up to you. No, know, but we thought of one. What was it? Uh, uh, why? why what happens? Or why? 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 Do trademarks expire? Why does copyright okay. expire? Why does a copyright expire? Okay. Why does a copyright expire? Oh, it just, it just like... It just like dictated my time. Bruh! <laughs> <laughs> but let's read it. Here, here's the shit. It's right there. Read back your question. Uh, copyrights <laughs> expire to strike a balance between protecting creators' rights and fostering a rich public domain. After expiration, works enter the public domain, allowing wider access, use. Wider accents? Canceled. And, <laughs> and cultural contributions without the restrictions of copyright. Okay, I mean, that's cool. Whenever they decided the, the, the rules of copyright, they were like, it doesn't benefit anybody to lock a, a beloved character behind a hundred years of, like, you know, zeitgeist. So they're probably just like, we want the public domain to have a lot of cool shit, too. And so it, it, it allows the public domain to be full of, Can you like, read it one more time? Yeah. Copyrights expire to strike a balance between protecting creators' rights and fostering a rich public domain. After expiration, works enter the public domain, allowing wider access, use, and cultural contributions without the restrictions of copyright. Okay. That's interesting. We can expand. 
it, that's just very is that not is that not very interesting to have like I know I get what you're saying. to have like a written law in place for the benefit of like the artistic right. community. It's interesting. Like I've never thought of it like that. Because there's not much that's I don't think much exists like that. There's probably a lot within this world yeah. of like protecting art and stuff. But you're not used to hearing like this is in place so that people and so that we could have a rich culture. Yeah. So it is the founding fathers mission to have Tugboat Thomas on the Corridor Digital YouTube channel. Yes. It's the will. Our forefathers fought and died. All of them are dead, by the way. Destroyed the Native Americans. A lot of the forefathers were on Epstein's list. Destroyed the natives. For the benefit of the artistic. Of having Steamboat Willie in the public domain. Yes. It's very interesting. I saw a TikTok of this guy having a conversation with some AI. Maybe it wasn't ChatGPT. You know <laughs> Chad GBT is the guy. Chad! That <laughs> Dude, that's funny. That's probably coming. That's probably been. Yeah. I don't doubt it's that. It's been coming. Somebody makes Chad GBT say something um, uh, misogynistic. Yeah. And then they call it Chad GBT. Yeah. But like, <laughs> but what if it was like a just it operates the same as Chat GPT, but more chill, but it's Chad. It's like, yeah. Because sometimes Chads are like annoying and are like, bro. Yeah. Like, remember that guy, Shithead Steve? He, you, you've you seen it. It's I'm a sure meme of a guy in a doorway oh, yeah, with his hat uh -huh. to the side. And he has like a yeah. velour hat. <laughs> yeah, that's, Louis Vuitton hat that's or a Chad, I think. Dude, what is Chad short for? That's a great question. Chad GPT? We need a third host, I think. <laughs> The name Chad is typically not short for anything. <laughs> it is given. It is a given name on its own. It has old English origins and is often used as a standalone name rather than being a shortened form of another name. Honey, I'm out to ride the penny farthing with Chad. Absolutely, honey. I found it. What'd you find? The thing to talk to? Yeah. Well, this guy, like, uh, I saw a TikTok of this guy that was talking to one. And he was like, hey, can you do a fart sound for me? And it goes, no, um, it's, n it's not really what this is service is for. Or like, I, I could, I, it's not really a, um, this isn't a, can you play a sound for me and I'll play sounds for you. This is more information. The robot says that? Yeah. And then the guy goes. Robot has standards? Yeah. And the guy goes, but Siri and Alexa do it. <laughs> and she goes, haha, I see why you'd say that. Well, Siri and Alexa do many other things, whereas what we do is factual information. <laughs> and then he goes, all right, well, can you say a word that sounds the closest to a fart and make it sound like a fart? And then it goes, sure, I'll try. And then it goes, fort. <laughs> 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 and then he just keeps going with it and it just gets funnier and funnier. Dude, that's so funny. Isn't that great? I have one. Thwarp. Thwarp. <laughs> there are some that go through wet, 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 wet. Anyway, uh, I need a police siren sound stat because we have piss news. Piss news. Piss news. Yeah. Chat GPT, I need a siren sound. Stop. Cause there's his news. Dark show. <laughs> it's a dark show. Damn, today, we are guys. having kind of a dark show today. Uh, guys, guess what? Huge piss news, Kevin. Oh, you excited oh, about I this? See it, man. This is huge. I'm glad we get to live to be. A I'm part glad of we're this. we're alive right now. Me too, man. In the same timeline as this piss news. You're in luck, says this article's title. Because I, I want to be honest and say kind of out. <laughs> but if it's interesting enough, I'm back. Scientists figured out why P is yellow. And did you know we didn't really know why? I did not know. That's interesting, right? I could imagine because a lot of stuff in your body is like not great color. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of waste is just like waste brown sure. or, or yeah. whatever ish. Cause yeah. there's lots of stuff that, that deal with it. Yeah. And I think physiologically, biologically waste can't look pleasant. It's got to look gross to us. So we don't eat it and shit like dogs do. Like we don't eat shit. But shit is the same color as brownies. Yeah, but they're not. If but if there was a brownie in the grass that was like kind of poop shaped, you'd be like, ooh, I'm not gonna. Ugh, ugh. Well, if there was a like a baby Ruth in the grass, I wouldn't eat it because it was in the grass. But if someone and it's probably where shit is, even though that would look exactly like shit. If someone spread a bunch of shit into a brownie yeah, tin, that's what yeah, I was thinking. and then like cooked it in the oven and then put like brown sugar on top or something, or, and like chocolate chips, uh-huh. you'd see like- that and be like, yummy gummy. That looks like brownies. Yeah, but would you smell it? I mean, that's... It's not the first thing I do when brownies are present, presented to me. Smelling isn't the first thing you do? No, not really. Dude, you can walk in the front door and know that there are brownies being made. That's what I'm saying. That's, that is the, that's the bigger clue, that there's not brownies. But if we're talking just visually... Yeah. Poop and brownies kind of look the same, don't they? <laughs> I don't want to unpack that, actually. <laughs> Let's ask Chat GPT. I think we need. I'm not a. I'm not an expert, but we need brownies to look like shit to enjoy them. <laughs> so okay. So so I'm gonna say feces looks like brownies. <laughs> <As> Chat GPT. <laughs> the C in Chat GPT is is there, stands for crap. Is there anything you can you can add, Kevin? Am I to that regular lit or am I hyper lit? No, you're looking nice. Okay. You look how Steve looks because Steve has a nice window. But Steve has a hat on. Okay, so mine points to the skies. Oh, oh, oh. I said to ChatGPT, feces looks like brownies. Is there anything you can add to that statement? While it's true that the appearance of feces can sometimes be similar to certain foods, it's essential to emphasize that feces and food are entirely different substances <laughs> with distinct compositions and purposes. Feces, <laughs> also known as stools or bowel movements. The street, the street name is stools. You take a right on stools. How about this? <laughs> is there anything? Why do? Why is piss yellow? Interesting like <laughs> about the concept of brownies and. Feces look similar. Wouldn't you know that in your own brain? I want to know if there's something interesting it could tell me about that. <laughs> it says the resemblance between brownies and feces is often a source of humor and jokes, especially in a lighthearted context. This similarity has been the That's subject. talking about this conversation. Yeah. This similarity has been the subject of various comedic situations in popular culture, including jokes, memes, and humorous discussions. Dude, what if it said dynamic banter episode 406 talked about oh, I would I would hope it would be a wake up time. It's night nights. <laughs> Not a dark show. <laughs> it is kind of the darkest black mirror shit we've ever thought of on the show. All right. So, everyone's dying to know why piss is yellow, right? Scientists say they've answered the age-old question. This is a Gizmodo article. Age-old question. People have been asking this every day for ages. Just why is our pee yeller? In new research, a team found that the enzyme produced by gut bacteria that plays a major role in turning our urine mellow. It's So it says that it helps scientists better understand the gut microbiome, which apparently we're learning recently in science and health that, like, the gut biome is, like... The source of a lot of brain problems. Yeah, that's why your stomach like is in the middle of your body. And that's why sometimes your tummy is bigger than your brain. Mm. And that's why you have to think twice as much as you eat. Mm. That's right. Mm. Also, bile. You ever just throw up bile? It that's happens. Yellow. Yeah. That's yellow. Yeah. That's like bright yellow, like piss. Uh, urine is the finale of our body's natural drainage system, and it's made out of excess water and waste products filtered out of our blood via the kidneys. Um. <laughs> Close enough. 
Some of these waste products are created when our cells reach the end of their life cycle, including the red blood cells that use hemoglobin to deliver oxygen throughout the body. And an important compound produced by red blood cells is heme, hema, hemi, hemi, the precursor to hemoglobin. Cool. Globin, sorry. I like goblins. Yeah. That would Watch be a fun, the hemoglobin. fun educational cartoon. I'm the hemoglobin, it'll teach you about blood. <laughs> <laughs> he was a sensation in the 80s. Yeah, him and the bill from Capitol Hill used to fuck. That's right. So anyway, um, why is it yellow? so the reason why it's yellow is because there is a enzyme that uh, that's produced by gut bacteria that when it's exposed to oxygen it becomes yellow. yellow like yeah. how blood Wait. turns red so is it yellow inside your body it's not it's clear i guess and then when it but i feel like right when it comes out it's already yellow uh well but it, it's it's being exposed to oxygen like right away but sometimes your pee is not this like is when true. your pee is really clean yeah. it's it's clear that's right so that means maybe it's super if that stuff is still in there but it's super diluted. You have less of it. Yeah, and because you, you're not drinking enough water or uh-huh. something. Your pee is disg- when you're dehydrated, your pee is it's disgusting, you know. So it's like a, old highlighter. Like when you do a highlighter over like a wet ink. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Just like gross and muddy. And it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh Someone saved us the whole article headache and said, quote, oops, and I made it go away. That's awesome. (laughs) And said, quote, what does this little box with the X do? (laughs) When red blood cells degrade after their six-month lifespan, which is in your tum-tum, I guess, a bright orange pigment called Billy Rubin. I knew that guy. (laughs) Yeah. He was the fifth beetle. Billy Rubin is produced, I guess, Billa Rubin? I don't know. Is produced as a byproduct. Once in the gut. <laughs> the Billy Goblin. The resident floor. I'm Billy Goblin, the Hemogoblin. Billy, Bro- I'm Billy Rubin, the Hemogoblin. <laughs> uh, and once in the gut, the resident <laughs> That's flora. That's it sounds like when it moves through. <laughs> the once in the gut, the resident flora can convert Billy Rubin into a molecule. <laughs> Let's see what the computer. Let's see how the computer. Dude, you know how many history roads we're gonna get from like medical professionals being like, "Let's call um, Heather." Nothing. (laughs) Nothing you said was right. Let's see what the computer thinks it is. Ask the computer if we should call Heather. Billy Rubin. Okay, I like it. I love it. Billy Rubin. (laughs) You spend Christmas over my house. It says once in the gut, the resident flora can convert Billy Rubin into a molecule which can turn yellow if exposed to oxygen. This molecule, urobilin, I'm the Eurogoblin, I'm from Europe, <laughs> is a major reason why urine is yellow. I guess, like, we could have guessed that it was something like that. I, I mean, it kind I of mean, goes I back could... to the original thing where, like, a bunch of stuff in your, like, your body doesn't really make pleasant colored stuff. Oh, right. Like, blood is kind of, like, the most pleasant, Thing that your body makes to look at because blood's the color of love that's the color of love uh, uh, uh. sometimes it's black and sometimes it's white all I know baby is everything's right that's your body make the blood go round <laughs> It's hip to be blood. Blood is the color of love. <laughs> blood is the color of love sounds like a white snake song. Yes. <laughs> That's 100% accurate. I went to go see Rat last night and they played Blood is the Color <laughs> yes, of Love. Dude. <laughs> uh, damn, that reminded me of a band. Damn, I'll never remember the name of it. But funny like hair rock metal band names are like the funniest shit ever like rat rat white snake warrant poison yeah warrant i remember for whatever (laughs) reason my mom brought home like 50 cds one day like somebody was giving them away or she won a box of cds in a raffle 
and there were like two good ones, and then there were all like Warrant's third album, <laughs> and then like a bunch like, of hair metal bands. That? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like lost to time music. Yeah, there's so much music that's recorded. Not to say anything about Warrant, I really have sure. no opinion about Warrant, but there's so many bands that for every band that's creative because the guys love playing music together, there's 20 that are created because somebody wanted to make money through the music industry. Oh, sure. Yeah. And then those bands have so many like second and third albums right. that are filled with absolutely nothing. Cause they have those record contracts that are like, you're going to make three albums with us. Yeah. Fart, and- fart jar. Yeah. Like, um, emporiums. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like the little, fart jar factory. Little, <laughs> little library of <laughs> fart jars. <laughs> fart jar records. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a funny, we should call that, that should be our record label. We should do a sketch where the, where the executives <laughs> of fart jar records. We have fart jar records. Pride in our sense of smell. <laughs> <laughs> we could smell a hit. From a mile away. I just took a hit in the bathroom. <laughs> he who dealt it. Gets the money. <laughs> we smelt it and you dealt it. You, and we dealt it to you and then you gave us money. We dealt it and we smelt it. <laughs> we, <laughs> we farted and we dealt it. <laughs> to you. All the, the all the acquaintance. <laughs> Three. Dude, uh, this is kind of, this is going to be a kind of a dark show. <laughs> Show. Dude, I have a lot of notes of things I just wanted to bring up. Okay, Are I would love to hear it. Yeah, let's hear about yeah, it. Yeah, I have something too. Under oh, go ahead, the Kyle. knowledge that it's a dark show. Dark show. Okay, so we'll do all these, but we'll do them dark. Yeah. It's a dark show. What were you going to say, Kevin? Well, I, no, you go first if they're small. Oh, this is dark? Yeah. My friend Chris posted something on TikTok or Instagram about how the five love languages was written by a dude who was in the KKK or whatever. No way. Is that have true? Ever, have you ever heard that? Can we double what? check that? Let's ask. Chat I'll say GPT. allegedly, but that's, uh, he said that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he said, I should have written, I should have wrote down the guy's name and everything, but he was like, that book was written by somebody who was in the KKK. Love language, the love languages, the, the five love languages, like that whole theory. You've heard that yeah. where it's like, um, gift giving words yeah, of yeah, affirmation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. And people put a lot of stock into that. And like, I never knew anything about the author. Okay. And then Ch- he was saying that, Oh, so oh, no, no, well, do you want to know before yeah, uh-huh. this? Okay. Chat chat. GPT says no, no. The what? concept of love languages was not originated by someone associated with the Ku Klux Klan. Okay. The love languages theory was developed by Dr. Gary Chapman, a respected author, counselor, and pastor. Also sounds like a racist name. Though. Doc- definitely. <laughs> Dr. Chapman first introduced the concept in his book, The Five Love Languages, which was published in 1992. Oh, interesting. Okay, so that is just a good um, reminder to do more research, I Dude, guess. Dude, it actually says, this is awesome, at the bottom... It's important to be cautious about spreading misinformation and to verify the accuracy of information before sharing it, yeah. especially when it concerns individuals and their contributions. Yeah, that is that's very accurate, and that is a good. And I think um, I think AI just won, as Dude, far as I'm concerned. I I do love that it's like let's remember to not do that yeah. because a lot of people will probably type something like that into this. Kind of a dark show. It's kind of a dark show. So that's my bad, I guess. We are learning a lot today. <laughs> and then I just wrote I just wrote <laughs> Looking back, writing a book about how some people like it when you give them things shouldn't have been that influential in the first place. That's really funny. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And then better book about love. Oh yeah. There should be a new book about love. Well, this is, this is me giving like yeah. my suggestion. Yeah. That's the good. Bible. Oh yeah. Sure. Sure. No, I'm just there's kidding. Some, oh, there's um, some good love lessons in there. I won't deny that. Did you ever read bad, the game? Real bad ones. Did you, did you ever read the game? No, but I know all about it. I read the game. I read the game in an attempt to be like, maybe I'm not 
talking to women in the most efficient way. And sure, if you don't yeah. know anything about the game, it was written in like early two thousands by like pickup artists yeah. and wow. guys who would like a nag jack. women and like peacock where yeah. if you ever see a guy in public and he's dressed like a magician, but he's not doing any tricks. That was actually part of the book is that you do tricks and that book like trick people yeah, like tricks. Like you snap and then fire comes out. It told or there's you something to do behind your ear. Shit? Yeah. yeah. Well, you dress Holy like a duck. You shit. talk like a duck. So That's I, crazy. that was like super popular at the time. They even had a show on MTV that was like the pickup artist or whatever. Okay. So I read it and I got about halfway through and then my early twenties brain was like, this is just teaching you how to act like you have confidence. Yeah. And so I shut the book and I was like, oh, all I need to talk to women is like legitimate confidence. Yeah. Cause that's like how to paint yourself up. Like you have confidence when you don't. It's make believe shit. And it's it tells like lying, you like essentially. shit to say to women yeah. that is like, will make you appear like you have confidence in yourself. Right. Like putting somebody else down is a shitty way to tell them that you think that you're better than them. Right. So once I realized that on my own, I was like, Oh, it's, that's what this book is, is, this book is telling weak people how to be mean yeah. instead of regular people yeah. that you have to be confident. Yeah. And I'm like, that's the best book about, that's the most influential book about love that I've ever Right, read. right, right, right. Like this is the wrong, this is like a roadmap to the wrong road. It's like, read it to know that's wrong. So once you know the whole, the, uh, what is it called? Like what's the mapping stuff called? Like that art like when you feel, Oh, Oh, cartography cartography. Once yeah. you know the cartography of the wrong road, <laughs> you could be like, Oh, I'll just go. Now I know here. the right way. To yeah. Go. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. guess that's true. Like I, in the, in the, in the pursuit of knowledge for the pursuit of knowledge, I would understand that. But I also feel like don't give that fucking guy any money. No, don't give me any money. Book. Find it on the internet and steal it. Right. I'm just saying the be there, the benefit is there, and the book was written by the KKK, and you got it. You can't see it. <laughs> it was written by the KKK. Okay, I have another one that doesn't put anybody's career in jeopardy. Um, what do you think about this? Is something we would have come up with. It is a dark show. Oh, but this this thing is kind of nice, but we need to turn it dark, maybe. No, no, go for it, man. Dark the shows. There's no rules in no a dark, dark show. Dark show. Kevin knows dark that. Out, I mean, it's dark outside. Kevin, it might be dark. What out. was that? What was that you just said? It might be dark outside. No, no, no. The thing before that. There's no rules. There's no rules in a dark show. There's no rules in a dark show. Rules in the dark show. <laughs> that just kind of seemed like a cool title for us. <laughs> so, what do you think about this? The saying, "That's really something." <laughs> that's really oh, that's something. A great, that's a great phrase. Well, it's a dying phrase. I know. Why is that? Because I think that's like the shore of phrases. Well, you know why? I think I have a theory that like just popped into my head. Tell me if you think this seems accurate. When someone would say, "What's the? What is it again?" That's really something. That's really something. There was a time that was during a time when there wasn't like outward <laughs> cynicism and like you know the idea that saying something like that means like you're not really into it. Nowadays, if you said, "Well, that's really something," someone would be like, "Are you joking?" Like, yeah. you, like it sounds like you're being like sarcastic but right. back in the day they that's really it. something was meant because there wasn't as many things yeah like wow now that is really something a lot of things are nothing yeah but what you said is is at least something it's like one step up from an insult right it's like when yeah you, you don't want to insult the person and you don't want to discourage the person yeah that's it's like the equivalent of telling a kid like that their drawing is like that's something. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Like, whoa, you really drew something there. Right. Like when I used to be a camp counselor, they gave us a worksheet of things to say that weren't like great art. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because you don't want to encourage kids who, who are bad at art. Right, right, right. But you do want to keep them doing it. Right, right. So you sure. say, why don't you tell me what this is? Right. <laughs> and shit right. like that. That must be something. Why don't you tell me what, what it is? What do you think it is? Yeah. I can tell that that is something. 
but I don't want to. <laughs> Tell me more. It's like when a kid comes over the drawing and goes like, "That's you." Yeah. And then nothing else, is, like nothing, is discernible. And you can't say like, "No, it's not." Yeah. <laughs> no, it's but not. You're bad. Usually, the next question is, "And what's that?" Yeah. That's a tree house. <laughs> okay. Well, isn't that something? <laughs> Both of those things together on that paper, that's really something. That's something. Yeah. I do. I would like the genuineness of it to not, because it would be funny. Obviously, someone sends you their mixtape or something, or they're like, "Here's a script I'm working on," it's and something. you're like, "Well, that's something." Yeah. Is like. It's like saying it's interesting. That's yeah. Interesting. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. But I kind of not elaborating <laughs> further. I like. I like. The back in the day usage of that's something where people were like excited about yeah. it. And I like the genuine use of that's interesting. Cause sometimes yeah, right. I'll say that something is interesting before I know how I feel about right. it. I'm right. like, well, at least I will think about that like very genuinely. Yeah. But and why there don't are, you say that? there's dismissive ways to say, wait, what'd you say? Why don't you say that's in, like, I'll be thinking about that. Dude, no one respects that. No. Yeah. I'll, I, That's what I mean. It's weird. It, I, it weird. sucks that no one respects that, but you have no idea how many times in casual conversation I want to be like, let me think about that before. Yeah. Because you're kind of pressured into if you make your opinion known. I think people are scared of each other too. Like, am I going to offend somebody? Yes, but I, way? I think that's the decision to make your opinion known. Yeah. Before you know how you feel about something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a pressure to do that. Like on a podcast or on Twitter or whatever, it feels like you should have your opinion. You're broadcasting. So you should have your opinion formed and know who's in the KKK before you even <laughs> say that. Right? So it's like. Inform yourself. Be you're informed. not. You're almost. If you're speaking out loud, you're not allowed to have no. Like if somebody says something, you don't know how you feel about it. You're not allowed to not react. Right. Even though you might be thinking about it, how you feel about well, especially it. Especially if it demands some kind of response or if they're expecting a response or if they're expecting a response. Yeah. yeah. And but, that is something, but I really do feel like <laughs> there's this caution people have now of, wow, of what they say because they, everyone, the, the veil is like lifted. Like, we all overthink shit while we're on the toilet or in the shower or whatever. And, and we're not the only neurotic ones. Like everyone is as neurotic as we are pretty much. And we're all kind of like, yeah, figuring human beings are kind of neurotic. Yeah. And if someone said to me, wow, that's interesting about like a script I'm working on. And then that's it. Yeah. I'd be like, really I would overanalyze that answer yeah. later for how, especially if it's someone I respect and then it's yeah that's the thing it's yeah. like what kind of weight do you yeah. put behind the person saying it? yeah yeah if it's just someone off the street hey I saw your thing it's kind of okay well, I'm gonna be like that, oh that sucks for like a minute and then be like whatever I don't know that fucking guy that is like I see a lot of people get really butthurt about comments yeah and isn't that like the prime example of like consider the source like maybe that person said something that struck a chord with you, but it's like, you really, do you respect that person? Do you know anything about that person or where their opinions came yeah. from? Do you even want that person as somebody who is like fucking with you to begin with? This might be going into some, uh, <laughs> territory. We might start doing that, but there's <laughs> some, I have kind of a little bit of a pet peeve. Uh -huh that I developed because of being in the like social media world, the digital YouTuber space void void where like comments can be like inappropriate or whatever. Like, yeah, they're like, people are assholes. People are trolls, dark trolls. But one of my pet peeves is like taking a troll comment and then like, plastering it onto yes. social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. being like, yeah, well, maybe you should think about what you think. Right. The worst thing to do. And it's like, that's not the way to deal with it's that. It's not the because way to deal with that. Because you just welcome more of it. Dude, it's also showing that all the people... It's so sometimes I'll get a negative comment and I'll answer back. I'll like reply yeah. back to it if I have the energy to keep the engagement yeah. going to make the video be seen by more people. Yeah, yeah. But the people who plaster it is showing everyone who does love and respect you 
that you're giving your attention instead of yeah. giving it to them, you're giving it to like this piece of yeah. shit who doesn't really like shouldn't but, be a part of your life. But anyway. on the reverse of that, like it is a difficult thing to navigate in general, and there's no rule book or anything. We should make one, and that's rule number yeah. one: don't I, plaster your shitty. I yeah, can't I mean, tell I Kevin's could, into it. I, mean, I guess we could do a like. <laughs> that's a, really. We could do a the game, but for the internet. Kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. But make it be very like not chad bro-ish but yeah. very like just we're kind of just like 80s 90s kids that like grew up through the internet boom we were the first so crop we some, of yeah. like professional internet yeah people. So i was thinking have, about that yeah, the other day exactly dude first monetizing generation. youtube in like 2009 or whatever and being on the first like group of people yeah and now that's people people are born wanting to be like an influencer right which is continues to be the worst title for a job. Totally. But if that's the way it's going to be, there should at least be some guidelines that like, you know, we're not talking about like rules with punishments or anything, but certainly right. more like guidelines. It makes you look very bitter to broadcast your yeah. like negative comment, which are like a needle in a haystack of positive comments. But the, on the reverse side of that, there's also the complexity of posting like, Hey, uh, 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 like a very positive comment or something like a, I love your content so much and you changed my life or something uh -huh. like sharing those are a different kind of like broadcasting. It's like that's still kind of weird. Too, it's too. still kind of weird too. Cause it's like, well, all right, I guess you're the shit. Yeah. And it's like, but it's like, you know, wh where is the line? I would say at least it, the difference between negative and positive. Sure. It's like saying, that saying that you broadcasting that you like save somebody's life with your content yeah is a little icky because there's not a lot of humble that goes along with it but posting a negative comment is you know it's like i'm showering everyone with negative yeah. like dark energy but it's like at the very least the save the life thing mm. is like a positive thing it's like the filming yourself giving money to someone yeah. who needs money. Yes, which I do not give out money unless there's a camera. Unless okay. there's a camera, because yeah. that's just how it should be. <laughs> how is anybody going to know you're a good person? Camera on, money on. They're supposed to just assume you're a good person? No. There needs to be not they never see it. My dad goes to church every week, and no one sees it. So what's the point? Right. Someone's got to say that he goes to church. Dude, that's why in Catholic church you do peace be with you and you shake everyone's hand so they know that you're there. Yep. <laughs> that is that's why you pray to God so he knows that's that you're there. God the would not know that you're in church if you don't pray. That's right. Or How's God supposed to know? He can't see you unless you're in church. God has four square. God can't see you unless you're in church. God has four square on his phone. He wants to see you log in on four Who's square. Who's the mayor of church? <laughs> Is there a number? Let's call God. Let's call God. Let's call God. It has Whoa, to go all the way ahead. Number goes to heaven. Long distance call. <laughs> God? Yes, it's Whoa! Yes. This is an exclusive. Who's that? Who's clapping? There's an audience here, and they love you. Whoa, are you at church? You know that people... We're not at church, actually. I'm just saying we're at church. I'm just oh, kidding. we're at church. We're at church. We're at church. Mm, I didn't see you check in. Shit, Kevin, check in on the Dynamic Banter Foursquare okay, account. Okay, there you are. Log in the Dynamic Banter Foursquare account. Hold on. I, got, I, need to, I need to fix something on my Foursquare real quick. What is it? Thank you for coming to church. I hope you enjoy your stay. Sam. Okay, what's what's going on? God, we, well, we, well, what is going on? We wanted to ask God a question. You called me and you forgot what the question was? I forgot was. why we called God. I gotta go. Damn it, we missed our opportunity with God. Call the mayor. Mayor. <laughs> what do we call God for? Hello? What do we want to ask God? Mayor. 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 Hi. Um, um, the mayor. Mayor, what's up, man? How are you? Happy New Year. How's this? This is Steve from Give me one second. Okay. Hello? <laughs> the mayor. mayor, this is Steve from Dynamic Banter. 
Happy New Year, buddy. <laughs> Happy 2024. I've been on a bender. How many 2023s have you written down on important paperwork? My wife says I'm not allowed to see 2023s anymore. I had to give up seeing a bunch of 23s when I got married. Give me one second. <laughs> Where's that that okay? Hey, Hey, Steve. Yeah, what's going on, man? Do you have a question? Well, yeah, we wanted to talk. We wanted. We called God. What? We called God. Are you on LSD right now? No, I'm not on LSD. I'm I'm sober. Well, you call God. I am. Kevin's sober, and we called God. (laughs) Kevin's sober, and we called God. You guys went out to the (laughs) desert and called (laughs) Kevin (laughs) Wood. That's the episode Kevin title. Sober Kevin's over and we call God. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's so funny to call God. And Dude, we keep getting into God. these conversations about guests to have on the show. And we should have just been calling God. We should have been calling God the whole Chat time. Chat GPT and God. God. All right. Should we do some ads? Of Kevin? course. Of course. Don't be Special guests, Chat not, GPT and God. Ridiculous. It blows my mind how quickly we forget what we're talking about. <laughs> Well, there's no structure we to the show. So we so jump around a lot. And then like something we'll say in mid conversation will remind us of something else. Right. This is like listening to somebody have adult onset ADHD. Also, let's not forget. It's a, <laughs> it is a dark show, dude. We should both do Ritalin one episode and just talk about one thing. Does awesome. Ritalin affect you in that way? Doesn't yeah, it make focus. you focus? I thought it was over focus? time. No, it's it's fast. Well, it's like you take it and that whole day you have Ritalin effects. Yeah. Yeah. Last all oh, day. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Huh. I mean, I don't know what works faster, Ritalin or Adderall. I've heard Ad- that's what I mean. Is it like a what's the word I'm looking for? Like you know how aspirin will like it's fast, fast acting, acting, I yeah. guess. Uh huh. Is you that want how Ritalin the- works? Is Ritalin fast? Act- Let's ask Chat GPT. Ellie has it. Is Ritalin yeah. fast acting? Is it intravenous? Like it, it's in an EpiPen. You stab yourself in the leg and then you focus on. You could watch a whole show. <laughs> How do you spell Ritalin? Great question. R I D I L I N. Ritalin was the guy in Batman oh, who right. tells jokes. <laughs> <laughs> the Joker played the Ritalin. Uh, okay, so R I T A L I N. That's not how I would have spelled it, which just shows you. If you've ever gotten a text from me, you know that's not how I would have spelled it. Ritalin works sooner than Adderall and reaches a peak performance faster, too. How much? What's the time? Doesn't give me that information. Why doesn't it ever give you, it like... It just gives you the top notch. It says immediate release <laughs> forms of Ritalin typically start working within 30 to 60 minutes yeah, after see. ingestion. I say providing... that's, that's right. what happens with, like, any pill. Yeah. It, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes. Oh, so is it extended release or is it immediate release? Yeah. Like when you're in the bedroom. <laughs> I have an extended release in the bedroom. Last week it was a kind of a uh, it was kind of an extended release with a, a bit of a limited release because I'm not drinking enough water. You ever come for 20 minutes? There was an immediate release after not having done it for a little bit. Mm. No, not November. <laughs> You celebrate, Mike? <laughs> no, that's not really something to celebrate. Anymore. I was reading a book called The Game. It told me to do <laughs> no nut November. It told me to not nut and then be mean to girls. Don't look at women in the eyes that aren't uh, attractive. Unless you're doing magic. Is that music giving you numbers? <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. We also have a late Christmas gift from know, Beth like, Bush. You know, well, we'll we'll do ads and then we'll open it and we'll do. There's also a birthday gift in the in the mail. I gotta be honest with you guys. I'm feeling hungry. Uh, I was born hungry and I will die hungry. It's kind of a dark show. Dark, dark, dark show. Dark, dark show. Uh, but I'll tell you, when I think about hungies, I think about HelloFresh. Now, yeah. what is HelloFresh? Well, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, reportion ingredients, seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. 
You can skip the trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Ay, ay, ay. This time of year, everyone's looking to revamp their eating habits. Look to HelloFresh's wholesome health forward options like over 30 calorie smart and protein smart recipes each week. And hey, they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and HelloFresh agrees. In fact, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast oh. for life. Get real. Get out of town. That's right, free breakfast for life for subscribers. That means you're gonna enjoy a, f a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. Ha, <laughs> now that's way that worth waking up early for, isn't it, Mike? Yes. So here's the deal, guys. We love HelloFresh. I've used HelloFresh. Mike's used HelloFresh. Made delicious, excellent meals for the family, for yourself, for others. Very easy to make. They give you everything you need. You feel like a world-class chef making this stuff. So, you want to feel like Mike and I felt before using HelloFresh? Then go to HelloFresh.com slash banterfree and use that code banterfree, all one word, for free breakfast for life. That's, it's crazy. I'm losing my mind. I can't even think about it. I can't think about it. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash banterfree with code banterfree. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Dark show. <laughs> what was that? We're gonna rock it to the moon, everybody! If I asked you how many subscriptions you have, would you be able to list them all to me? No. And tell me how much you're paying for each? No. Um, if you would ask me this question before we started using rocket money, we would have said yes as well, but let me tell you. Yes or no? We would have been wrong. Interesting. Interesting copy, I think. <laughs> They're assuming that you would say yes? If I asked you how many subscriptions you have, yeah. would you be able to list them all and how much you're paying? No. If you would have asked me this question before I started using Rocket Money, <laughs> I would have said yes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> kind of a... Uh, kind of a weird flex <laughs> <laughs> but uh but guess what what i would have been wrong mike <laughs> <laughs> i would have been wrong because i would not be able to know that <laughs> i can't and honestly after rocket money you're gonna Rocket to the moon to find out how many you actually have and all the money you're wasting. <laughs> and do you ever feel like money is just flying out of your account and you have no idea where it's all going? I know what I want to say, but I don't know what the right answer is. Well, guess what? 
it's all those subscriptions. Think about it. Between streaming services, fitness apps, delivery services, parenting apps maybe, even, photo apps, social media, pr plus, verification, parenting. potato chips plus, parenting blog. It's endless. I'm guilty of this. But if you use Rocket Money, you can find out what subscriptions you're actually spending real money on. And guess what? It can be eye-opening and Rocket Money helps you cancel them. Yeah. Dude, I have this new resolution in 2024 that I only use apps that are eye-opening. Guys, Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. Hey, babe. And Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. So guys, stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash banter. banter. That's rocketmoney.com slash banter. banter. Dude, what, what's the average amount of money? 700 something? Yeah, it says... Uh, Members save an average of seven hundred and twenty dollars a year. Dude, in a lot of places, depending, that's like one rent. That's a payment. lot of fucking money, yeah. So, this is a cool, th especially because of my honest answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the beginning, I think that's the situation that most of us are in. And wouldn't it be great to figure out exactly where your money's going, especially so nice. if stuff is tight? Yeah. So nice. So thank you, Rocket Money. Thank you, Rocket Money. Check that out to help you boys out at the DB Labs. Yeah, man. And if you like any of this stuff, at least go check it out and let them know we sent you, dude. We're tired of not making a fuss. If you like the ads, let us know, and then we're going to make a document and send it to the ads. Yeah. Especially the ones that don't like us. Yeah. <laughs> and then we make a decision on whether or not we want to work together in the future. No? No, I think that's a fucking fantastic idea, Mike. He was taking it in. I was taking it in. Oh, you were figuring out what you thought about it. I also wanted to take this moment to promote our Patreon. Yes! Guys, uh, patreon.com slash dynamic banter is the place to go to support your boys and get really cool Extra. content. Yeah, we try really hard to make uh, different stuff on there. Yeah. And Kevin's doing a great job. Yeah. And we're always thinking about ways to make that place cool and way mm -hmm. different. And uh, really excited about everything that we're going to do this year. Yeah, 2024 is very exciting. First episode of the new year, my... It is like a big sandbox Patreon. I know, and it's exciting. Play. It's exciting to think about shit that we could and will make. Yeah. We have some fun shit on the horizon, for sure. I can promise you that. And that's a promise. And, uh, yeah, you can check out shit like uh, Before the Banter. And. And. After the Banter, our new show. <laughs> After the show. Yeah. Talking Before the Banter with Owen and Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Talking before the banter. Also, new episodes of Cloverfield. That's right. Squinny. Uh, so we got a Christmas gift, I believe, from oh, Beth Bush. Wrapped. Well, they're wrapped. Silent night, holy night. Just an angel from heaven. Wow, there's oh shit. Okay, well, okay, well, it's all right. Don't worry. That's a lot of that. <laughs> Thanks, that's Beth. It, that's it. Thank you, Beth. Thanks, that's Beth. It. You ruined our house. Okay, that's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, there's one for Zoya too. That's it. I see that. Okay, let's. See. Okay, there's a card here. I think maybe open the presents before the card. Okay, all right. okay, all right, okay. Beth? This one is Mike. What do you think that means? That Round means that one's for me. Young virgins. This one is Kevin. Oh, I in my house. Wow, <laughs> Beth, our boy Beth Beth's over huh? at, uh, uh, I don't know where Beth lives. Presence.com. She lives in Texas. Kentucky? Kentucky. She lives in, <laughs> she lives in Trezums. Allegedly. She lives in Trezums. Beth is in the KKK. This is one is from Steve. <laughs> uh, Beth uh, is a sweetheart, this and I'll tell you, Beth is a very funny gal. 
And uh, bless her sweet, sleepy heart. She falls asleep in our <laughs> VR night every time. <laughs> and there has to be a Beth check at some point. Beth, are you uh, are you sleeping? Hi, we got some. We got eyes on Beth. It's it's funny because literally it'll be like qu- really quiet, and then you hear like. <laughs> And then Jesse will be like, hey, Ben, are you sleeping? And without a moment to beat, she goes, no. <laughs> Dude, you seeing know, somebody we... drift off to sleep from an outside perspective <laughs> is so funny. Yeah. Even from inside VR, it's yeah. funny. Because their, 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 what do you call it? Avatar? Yeah, yeah. Is still like. Doing this kind of thing. Wide awake and whatever. <laughs> but the body is like. Yeah, it's like, and the hand will just like, like yeah, because you dropped one of the things out of like the sensory <laughs> yeah. area, dude. But I do love when people are like not, or when people are definitely falling asleep, and you look over at them, and you go like, "Are you sleeping?" And they go, "No," no. and they're driving. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> they're driving. All right, okay. let's do one at a time. Mike, you open yours first. Okay. I'll tell you though, f- um, from being a child, it feels like clothes. We're following Christmas. You know how you can feel clothes. Ooh, I hate clothes. Okay, Beth got me some kind of wrapped up. This is wrapped up double wrap. This is wrapped up. This is like you spend time on that. Just Kevin, you're the shredded. producer. What should we do? What should I do with this? You're gonna want to take your hands. Yeah. Unwrap it. I don't think I unwrap di- this as well. Unwrap both of them. Like Beth is a sweetheart. For sure, but double wrap. I've never gotten a wrapped present no, that's been wrapped rip before. It's, okay. it's wrapped rip underneath the wrapping, rip it. with a go. different now texture of rip paper. Now, keep going. Dude, kind stop. of like, kind of annoyed and nervous about it. Now what? There's a different rip paper there. There's a different texture of paper to rip. It's a beanie. Oh, oh this is a great beanie, and it has a. Now uh, Whoa, wrap, unwrap. <laughs> there was three things to rip open oh, to get to that. Color. Dude, this is very soft. It's like a, a burnt that's orange really bean. nice. With a little fucking butterfly. Love the butterfly. And let's read this. I mm. want a beanie. This says this company was established in 2015. And was made by the KKK. <laughs> this was made by the KKK group known as the Girl Scouts of America. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, man. Says That's Girl a Scout. wonderful gift. I've never worn something made by the Girl Scouts before. I've ingested things made by the Girl Scouts. I hope mine is triple wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> Always triple Cold wrapped. Club, made in China. Oh, yeah. so the Girl this Scouts fancy. are just putting their name on. Us. Why are the Girl Scouts involved here? The it's Girl a Girl Scouts. Scout. Always find a way to be involved. What are they involved in there? <laughs> what do they do on that beanie? Do they help make it? Whoa, <laughs> that's weird to hear an old man say mommy. Make it? my mommy's life a song. Your mommy's dead, sir, for sure. My mommy's been dead a long time. <laughs> wrapped it. Beth, it's very cute and sweet. And small. Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Now we all have beanies on. <laughs> <laughs> So Steve, <laughs> Steve also got a beanie. <laughs> I'm gonna wear this on my walk home, <laughs> dude. This is insane. It's a fucking cone head, dude. I have to tell you this. Okay. If I didn't already tell you this, no. Beth. So we had a VR movie night and we watched Cone Heads. Yeah. <laughs> and while we were watching it, Beth was like, "I think I've seen this before." Mm-hmm. Uh, but this isn't it. This is something else. There's another movie that this is that this really reminds me of, and I'm like, another Coneheads movie? I was like, you remember people with Coneheads? She's like, yeah, maybe it's like a sequel or something. She's like, I remember the sequel. This I'm movie like, reminds me of Coneheads too. I'm like, there isn't a sequel to this, and she's like, no, I remember. It's like this, but, and she was like, it's from like the '90s, and I'm like, that's when this came out. And I go to IMDb and I pull it up on the screen and it shows the poster for Coneheads. Yeah. And Beth goes, yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. <laughs> I was like, girl, that's the movie we're watching. Yeah. We're watching this movie. Yeah. She was like. Convinced it wasn't that. Can I tell you, was this confused. like halfway through the movie? Yes. So 
90s memories for me for TV, for movies that were on TV are weird because there were so many movies that I never saw until 75% of the way through. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Because you would catch the middle of it or right. whatever. Like Beetlejuice, I didn't know what the first couple minutes of Beetlejuice was. PCU, I didn't know what the first couple minutes of that was. So it does seem like you're watching something familiar that you don't recognize until like yeah. 45 minutes right. through the movie. But it's so crazy. It was just like, there isn't another Coneheads movie. Right. There just wasn't. I think but, I, I but, get that. But I got like a vibe. I was like, am I, could there have been? Maybe I didn't know. It does seem like there could have easily been right? like eight Coneheads movies <laughs> right, right. that are right. uh, bad. Kevin's opening his <coughs> gift from Philly, uh, from Bat, sorry. I hope that from fits. What, what size is that? Oh! <laughs> One cone fits all. Bucket hat. Whoa! Whoa! Climbing! What is it? Kevin, it's show climbing. the cameras. It's what? It's climbing thing. Oh, it's climbing. It's boundaries. He got a boundaries uh, bucket hat. Dude, I'm going to wear this while I'm <laughs> <laughs> Let's all wear our hats while we're boundaries. Okay. Let's all wear boundaries. our hats right now on the show. Thank you, Ben. Let's all switch hobbies for a week. <laughs> Dude, this is great. <laughs> Steve, you look like a uh, index finger. <laughs> Maintain low tones with me. Maintain low tones. Ford Lincoln Mercury Sable. Lincoln Mercury Sable. Some chewing gum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, do it a whole episode with that, but don't. Don't mention it. it. <laughs> Fuck, that's so funny, man. Are you even in the camera? <laughs> Does it match my skin color really well? Yeah. Uh huh. Dude, so racist to have a, <laughs> a white conehead thing only. <laughs> there were black coneheads. There were. When they went to uh, Remlac. Remulac. Remulac. Yeah. Remulac to Narfa the Gothak. <laughs> Narfa the Gothak. Belda, what have you brought me? <laughs> that movie's great. Man. A four way tire iron. <laughs> I don't really wear a and a chewing no. gum. I have four hats on. <laughs> four hat. <laughs> Old four hat. <laughs> <gasps> this is adorable, but hang on, we'll get to that. Steve in a just learned a lot this episode, and that's why he looks like this. <laughs> I, I got big brain. Uh, it says Mary Hatness. Yeah. Um, She's like, everything sent to you is infected with lice. <laughs> Merry Christmas, I got the whole crew hats. Is it late? Yes. Is it kind of stupid? For sure. Love you, Fortnite. Fortnite. Beth. Thank you, Beth. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Beth, for warming our heads and our hearts this Christmas season. It says, P.S. I also sent Leanne and Jaunch hats. Nice. Who's Jaunch? Jaunch is the guy who runs our uh, Twitter. Oh, Jaunch. <laughs> and Leah is Leah's full name Leanne? Leanne, yes. Whoa, I want to call her Leanne. <laughs> She'll kill you. She will, by this point, she will kill me. <laughs> and a tip of my head to you. And guess what? There were some cute stickers in there. Oh, Whoa, what the fuck? A Rizzo that says, I'm here for the food. Rizzo is my favorite um, pop star. And then this one. And this one I think I'd much rather have if that's yeah, okay. Hell yeah, I'll take Rizzo. Don't it's I? the uh, Electric Mayhem. Oh, yeah. You got Starring Annie Dr. Mouth. <laughs> Dr. Mouth is there. You got Fluff. <laughs> Critchard. Dr. Mouth, Fluff. <laughs> Red Critchard. <laughs> And Jaundice. <laughs> John Von nice Jaundice. John Don Von Jaundice. <laughs> Cat Von Jaundice. Cat Von John, John Denver. I love it. Dude, there was another activity that I wanted to do this episode, but we are running out of time. But I do I know remind me to tell you about it when the show ends. Okay. Because I think it's very funny, but it might not be one of those for everyone. <laughs> Mike, do you... Want to say any upcoming shows? Yes, and then we I do. Jump into like maybe a history road. Or Thank two? you, Steve. Tonight, Friday the fifth, I'll be uh, hosting the main room of the Hollywood Improv at oh, seven o'clock, and also in the um, the Hollywood Improv Lab at nine forty-five, doing this awesome show called The Joke Off, which is run by my friends Torio and Zach, 
where they bring uh, four comedians and they give each of them a topic and you have to like write jokes about it in 10 minutes. Yeah, that's good. And then the winner, I think, goes to their next show. There's like a winner. And I'm very excited for it. So that's tonight, the 5th. On the 6th, tomorrow night, Saturday night, I'm at the Westside Comedy Theater in Santa Monica at 8 and the Comedy Store Belly Room at 1030. On the 7th, which is Sunday, I have an early show at the Lyric Hyperion. Oh, hell at yeah. Five. And a uh, bunch more local stuff in between that and the beginning of February. But the beginning of February, February 2nd, tickets just went on sale for the next two surrounded shows at the Hollywood Improv. Yeah, brother. So if you want to come uh, to those, hit me up and you could stay uh, up to date on all shows near you if you text 818 722 8682. That's tight, dude. You've been to that Lyric Hyperion a few times? Yeah. It's it's kind of, it's in Frogtown, right? Or it's like close to Frogtown? Uh, it's I want to say it's like the Silver Lake area. How far is Frogtown from Silver Lake? Silver Let's Frogtown is like East LA. Right? <laughs> How far is Frogtown? Has anyone ever made brownies in Frogtown? Ask. <laughs> and why does it look like poop? Dude, I'm sad Frogtown that we're all done also- with the game. I know we need a new one or something. Yeah, somebody make up a new game, a new end activity. Uh, Frogtown, also known as Elysian Valley and Silver Lake, are neighborhoods in Los Angeles. The distance between Frogtown and Silver Lake is relatively short. They are adjacent neighborhoods. Yeah, say it's like a two or three minute walk between them. Dude, Andrew Santino. Whenever uh, um, I was on the show with him in like Irvine or Brea. Yeah. Especially Irvine, Ir- Irvine, Long Beach area, he would talk about how Sublime was not that good of a band. That's really funny. And it's such a fun. That's the funniest area to do that in. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and he talked about that song Garden Grove. Like I we took it. We took a trip to Garden Grove. Smelled like Lou Dog inside the van. You never heard that one. Uh uh-uh. uh So that was like big uh, Sublime song. And like from the East Coast, we're like, whoa, what a cool song about like this glorious trip they took. Yeah. But like uh, Garden Grove from Long Beach is like 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Got a kick out of that always. Good guy. Good funny boy. Good funny boy. That That's one. Santino. One of the funniest boys there are. Um. All right. So shall we? Freak is when you fuck someone in one of the structures you build in Fortnite. Fort Freak. Where my Fort Freaks at? That's like Twitch channel audiences. Fort Freaks. Can we do a a call to action that History Road should be more story? Whoa, are we losing the History Road format a little bit? Yeah, we are. Okay, let's listen to episode one. And talk about what it should be. with the be. first History Road. Because I think so, Kevin is right. We need to go back to basics on History Road. Just a little. I get, like, if you see something really funny, but, like, there's so many clips that are sent and so many, like, sound bites that are yeah. sent. It's less of a story thing. Dude, also, sometimes I'll get angry messages on Instagram that people don't watch the videos that we send them. What? And that needs to be quelled a little <laughs> bit, I think. Like sometimes like you, I'm guessing you don't run through your like requested messages a lot and people will send me clips that are like, you have to show this to Steve on like oh. Instagram or something. Uh-huh. That's ridiculous. Yes. You don't have to send that message is all I'm saying. If Steve hasn't seen it, it wasn't in the cards for Steve to see it or Steve has seen it. Just don't send it to me. 
Send it to Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> or Josh. <laughs> Okay, all right. Well, we could just kind of just stumble through then, but I do like that call to action. Let's get History Road. Let's make History Road again great again. (laughs) What is the what's the is that it should be a (laughs) 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 we should absolutely do that. (laughs) Make History Road Road great again. Dude, we should definitely That's do insane. that. That's insane. What a conversation start. That's so... I would wear that hat everywhere. Yeah. Someone would be like... And I'd walk what fast. Are you, what is that? I'd what walk that fast mean? through certain neighborhoods with that hat Like, on. yeah, here comes a MAGA guy. Wait a minute. What are we saying? Wait, I don't know what that means at all. What is that? I just know that it's probably racist. It's a conversation starter. I like that. M H R G A. We should do a rally. We've never done a rally. We've done shows, but we haven't Let's done rallies. Let's consider that. Let's do a rally January 6th. Somewhere in January. Take it back. Sure. <laughs> Today's January 4th, so we're close. Shit. Let's get planning. This fucking... <laughs> How's mine look? When you take a step away. You look like Jess Rain a little bit. Good. Welcome back to the I internet, I know. I'm Joss. so excited. That I guy's do. great. <laughs> Dude, so good. I'm excited to see what he does. Me too. Because um, he's always been very cool to me mm-hmm. and very uh very funny dude. And a super nice funny guy. Dude. Nice yeah. nice is really, really nice guy. Dude was always super interested in stand up and then very complimentary about doing stand up. I saw him recently and he said something to the effect of like he was like introducing me to his friends. He's like, Mike's an internet person, but he's not a piece of shit. <laughs> Dude, there's so few of those. For well, sure. he's he's been. It's very interesting to see that whole class of like that whole era of YouTube people. Yeah, very drastically different personalities, and people took a lot of different roads with their life. Yeah, and I respect the people who are like from that era who are totally out. Yeah, like a Michael Buckley. Michael Buckley. I was just gonna mention it. And I respect the people who like pivoted to something else. Mm-hmm. And I respect the people like he took a long break and now he's doing stuff again. Yeah. It's all very interesting. That first crop of like professional internet people. I do love that guy. That show. Most of our buttons are about what kind of show it is. It is. Let it's, me do my show. Yeah. Freak show, freak show. Dark show. Freak show. Fupa. Today was a little bit of a freak show and a dark show. Yeah. Frankie Zappardino says days and the week and you. Hi, Mike and Steve. Hello from DBBBs and GBs. Chat GBBB. <laughs> Let's ask chat, chat D B D B B B boy. We should set up a chat D B B B. And it doesn't really know anything. No. It just says everybody's in the KKK. Yeah. Hey, who is uh Bill Nye? He's in the KKK. <laughs> That's good information. That's good information. Let's tell everybody. On the last episode, one trillion tic tacs. <laughs> You freaks mentioned wanting to know origins of the days of the week. You quickly abandoned this topic for a bit and looked up the origins of months' names. Dude, was it even a real episode title by this point? But I did some digging for those curious about the original question you posed. Most people know Thursday was named after Thor. Thor's Day. Oh, it's Thor's Day. He has a holiday every week. He does. But the rest of the people didn't live much beyond a week. Back only then. a week. Yeah. <laughs> he had a week to do all that stuff. That was really cool. When your life expectancy is 24, a week is like a year. <laughs> That's true. It's like a dog almost. But the rest of the weekdays are worse butcherings of Norse God names translated to old English. Sunday and Monday. Mondusa. Are... Mondoinsing. Sundansting. The birds make it better. 
Sunday and Monday are Sun and Moon's Day, respectively. Uh huh. That makes sense. Tuesday is Tears Day, the Nordic god of war. Nordic Te- god of crying. Tears Day. So all of these are like god, Greek god, I didn't know Nordic? Nordic. So much stuff is based on like so much of our language and time Our is Nordic based on like stuff. Well, so much came from like Greek stuff. Mm-hmm. Like how many word origins in English have like Greek? It's all whoever rules the world at any given time. Mm-hmm. That's why there's going to be like Beth's day. Uh, Wednesday is Odin's day. The literal all father Odin. What the hell? Why was the W for then? What? Somebody with a speech impediment tried to say Odin's day. <laughs> Thursday is Thor's day named after the comics. And Friday is Frigg's day. Yeah. The goddess of fertility. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Fox day. No Frigg's given. I'm coming day and night. I'm like uh, getting the feeling of coming in the gym. I'm getting the feeling of coming at home. I'm getting the feeling of coming backstage when I pump up, when I pose out in front of 5,000 people. I get the same feeling. So I'm coming day and night. I mean, it's terrific. It's as satisfying to me as uh, coming is. You know, as uh, having sex with a woman and coming. <laughs> what happened? What happened? What happened? We learned about Friday. <laughs> Just the day God is a fertility's day. And you have to S- sing that song to yourself every Friday. <laughs> Saturday wasn't originally named after a god in Old Nordic, but was called Saturn's Day when being translated. The big takeaway, I think... The everyone in the past needed to get their fucking ears and brains checked because none of this shit follows any kind of logic. Steve's rhetorical question, how would you feel if we called today Thursday, was low-key spot on. I have no clue why Odin was called Woden, but I also don't know why Orpa changed her name to Oprah. Yeah. Sorry to bore you, peace and love. Peace and love, Zach. Frankie Zapparango. There's something about like, are you really allowed to pass judgment about a decision that wasn't made during your time? Right. Like uh, that naming the days thing was probably such a fucking huge deal. Yeah. And it was so important that the titles be what they are. And it was done like hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So it's like by this point, of course, it sounds ridiculous, but the purpose of it back then was to measure time. Right. And they just needed something there. To and they like, all they talked about were like gods. It's interesting. You'd think they'd put like a hell of a lot of thought into it. But maybe they, did. they probably did is what I I'm saying. It. But, but we don't understand what they got the... from it. It was like weird shit like a W for Odin and stuff. But I think it works. It, ha- it does I work. That's why it's been awesome. around. That's yeah, what, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think are awesome, dude. I want to fast forward to a time where we're all having the same conversation. <laughs> and also, it says, "P.S. You guys have kept me awake on so many long drives, and your humor has kept me afloat during some pretty dark times." I'm sure countless people share this sentiment. Oh wait, that was the wrong one. Dark show. I'm sure countless people share this sentiment, and as we come up on the end of the year. I hope you know how appreciated you both are and how much this podcast symbolizes the unabashed desire for absolute absurdity. Is reading that the same as retweeting? Yes. It is? Yes. It doesn't feel like it is. But only not because it's like we've asked for History Road, which which are stories from Mm -hmm. people's lives that they want to share with us. Or maybe something like this that's interesting based on a conversation we had on the show. Uh, but you know, it's, it can't be helped that there's an addition to the letter that says, Hey, by the way, you know, it's not like I'm going to not read that part because that's the whole letter. That's the history road. 
But we're not going to chop it out and put it on the internet and be like, look at us. This is one of those things where it's like, <laughs> where I'm not, my idea isn't fully formed. I know, I know. I'm just saying it out loud. It's complex. Because we were talking about how up mm-hmm. your own ass it is to say your crowd work clip saved my life. To right. like retweet that. It could yeah. exist and you could post that, but to retweet it, is that up your own ass? Right. And then to like screen an email like this and read the whole thing but and then out leave out, yeah. is that, is that genuine or up your own ass? I think that what just happened was not up your own ass. I think retweeting. Cause it doesn't feel like, like it. Yeah, like if we made a clip out of this and just clip the part where just that we're part. good yeah, and put that on on the internet, then that would be like... You should do problem. four months of clips that are just like people saying that they like this show. Yeah. <laughs> but we could say that like we just want to share that people do like the show. I liked it. I thought it was a very genuine thing. Yeah. That wasn't something that was like uh, pre... Like none of us knew. Yeah, right? yeah. But I do like that they sit, that they're appreciating the absurdity of the show, which yes. is something that is nice to hear feedback on. But we should cut it out of the Absolutely. final episode. Yeah. Uh, but it does, and it says this show is only possible because of you delivering on that promise each week. That oh. it's just absolute absurdity. So to you, and to all the other two horn honk boys and girls, Vase and Mortimer, that covers everybody. Thank you. If the year, ever, if this, I'm sorry, if this ever makes it on the show. Tell Kevin to stop lighting the audience. That sucks that we're going to have to cut this whole thing. Stop it! Because that was a great history. Wants, wants a dark show. <laughs> it was a dark show. dark show. Stop lighting the audience. This is a dark show. All right, guys. I think you should play that. You should hear those versions of that. Oh, yeah. T- what, well. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are those? They're right in the beginning of it. So last week, you might remember that we were sent a brand new oh. theme song for the show. It was for the whole show, right? Not just for yeah. Cash for the show, know. yeah. And uh, and this week we got a shortened version and an right. instrumental version. I love it. Um, from Jacob Alexander, who made that file that that the new theme song to the show. Did I make a feist joke last week? Yes, you did. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, he says thanks for playing this song on the show. I made it made my day knowing you guys would even consider using it as the theme. I've also convinced you I'm not a serial killer, so everything is going to plan. Uh-oh. Now we're, now we're not so sure. <laughs> George Costanza? <laughs> That's right. Here's a short version without the verse, and another short one with just the instrumentals if you want to chop it up or use the fade out. I just want to celebrate what you guys do, so if you ever want more music, just hit me up. Love you guys. Thank you. Uh, cool. Thank you, Jason. All right, so let's hear the theme, the short one then, right? At least. Or you want to hear both of them? Short one. Play them both at the same time. Okay, yeah. great. Dynamic banter. Like see, we're gonna do but have some fun. Dynamic banter. Fucking hard. And make it good. Dynamic banter. Don't forget the history roll. Dynamic banter. Time to shut up. It's not so. Yo, we have to fucking. We have to spend some money and choreograph a huge one take dance number like broadway dance number right and played <laughs> at the, the beginning of every video episode yeah it's real it's good get like sparkler some, yeah you can get someone dressed like the devil in a white suit yeah <laughs> like a big goat crazy goat horns and like a goat face covered in blood you get people <laughs> making reason. like a yeah he's covered in blood the yeah. white suit is covered in blood. a beautiful woman dressed up like a jar of farts but the blood is like purposeful like sequin like blood <laughs> print you yeah, know that's beautiful anyway guys thank you for listening and watching and enjoying the show uh this thing i'm wearing is storing all of the heat in my head it and it's stuffing and it's i'm gonna pass out so uh thank you beth for the cool gifts Thank you guys for listening to the show. <laughs> when I take this off, a gallon of water is just going to pour Steve, out. Steve is dressed up like a baby bottle with a little hat on. <laughs> Please, Please drink out of my nipples. Drink out of me. Ooh, that feels nice, actually. Much better. <laughs> Holy shit, he's not wrong. Dude, that'd be so funny. <laughs> like, legit water poured <laughs> it's out. Well, it's fucking, you know, that's it's a trap. Boy. It's not breathable. It's fucking rubber, dog. Let's get, get out of here, that. Kevin. 
Thank you guys for watching the show. Guys, go see Mike. Yeah, please. On all of his shows. Mike shows have been so much fun. Been writing a lot. Please come to Surrounded. Dude, if you have a headset, watch. Oh, oh that made my stomach do a little tumble turn. Um, if you have a Oculus headset, go on Horizon yeah. Worlds and watch Surrounded, Star Studded. The one with Marlon Wayans just came out. That's really cool, man. Yes. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, and guys, please check out the Patreon, Dynamic Banter Patreon. Thank you, Kevin, Leah, Josh, Joel, Josh, uh, Joel, and everybody else, Byron. Yeah. The whole team got some cool stuff planned for 2024. Yeah, man. Let's lots do of this. Yeah, lots of cool stuff. Billy Rubin. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>